Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of the Nerd Apocalypse Podcast. I'm your host, Jay. I'm here with my co-host, Micah. Hey. All right, guys. We're back. Uh, okay. I did remember the anecdote I wanted to share uh, that happened <laughs> tonight. So my daughter, um, who is biracial, um, is in a daycare where they are doing a lot of uh, stuff on Black History Month, right? And <laughs> so... Like we had a conversation the other day and I was, you know, we were like pointing out the difference, like, you know, daddy's black, you're black, you know, but mommy is not black and, and, you know, but you know, mommy's brown. Right. And so, so tonight and we were like kind of reminding her of that and she goes, daddy's black, I'm black. And she looks at my wife and she goes, you're not black. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Damn!" And she was like, "You're brown." Tata, who is her, who's uh, her, my daughter's grand grandfather, she was like, "Tata's brown." She was like, "You're not black. You're not black. <laughs> You're not black." You're not black. You're not black. But she thought my wife Get was black here. because my wife has jet black hair. Like that, she thought that was the reason, and so she was confused as to how I could call myself black the other day because I have a bald head. <laughs> She's just like. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> I mean, you know her I mean? logic is sound, right? Like, yeah. like her logic is sound. Like, well, she's got black hair. You got no hair. You're the brown one, <laughs> right? Like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> yeah, she's fucking hilarious. She is so funny. <laughs> All right, um, let's jump right into it. You watched uh, the after party. This is on HBO Max. If I correct? No, this is on Apple TV Plus. Apple TV. Okay. Um. So it's a um, it's a uh, it's a murder mystery and a comedy, um, kind of like only murders in the building is a murder mystery and a comedy. Yeah, but um, but this is very different. Um, it stars a bunch of people: uh, Tiffany Haddish, who's playing a uh, detective; uh, Sam Richardson. That name doesn't uh, ring a bell uh, for all you Veep fans out there. Uh, oh. He played. Um, you, he's the black yeah, guy. You know who he is? He's the black yeah, dude. He's right? the black dude. Yeah, yeah. He's hilarious. Yeah. This dude is hilarious, man. Yeah, and funny. I hope that I hope that this is like the beginning of seeing this actor become like really big. You know what I mean? Like I, yeah, he's I, had I, he's I, had a pretty good rise over the last couple of years. Yeah, he he does interesting things, and I I um. I, I wish nothing but the best for this dude. He's hilarious. He's hilarious in this. Uh, Zoe Chow, uh, Ike, uh, Baron Holtz, Ben Schwartz, Alana Glazer, uh, yes. Dave Franco. Um, so yeah, a lot of, a lot of people in this thing. Uh, okay. the premise is, uh, it's a high school reunion and, um, and, uh, everyone goes back to, Dave Franco's uh, apartment. Dave Franco plays like a Justin Bieber type, right? Makes and sense. Um, and he go. Everyone goes back to uh, his apartment. He gets pushed out of a window and dies. Oh, wow! And okay. the, and Detective Tiffany Haddish comes in and she needs to question everybody, right? And so she sits down. To get everybody's side of the story. Now, the the um, the the gimmick with this show is that when she's getting down to uh, get everyone's side of the story, they that's what the episode is. Each person gets an episode that is dedicated to their side of the story, but their side of the story, uh, each individual person's side of the story, is based off of a movie genre. So the first hmm. person that gets so the first person that gets uh that volunteers her side of the story she's kind of like uh, an artsy like uh, like an artsy snobbish type right like she's got like the black uh rim black thick black frame glasses and sure. she seems like you know your stereotypical weird artist so her recount of the story that we see is played in an abstract weird artsy kind of way where everyone is speaking um not the way they usually would right okay and our pov character for the most part is sam richardson and he gives his side of the story and his side of the story plays out like a romantic comedy where uh ben schwartz is like his best friend and 
and it play it there's a meet cute and like it plays so like a romantic comedy right like it's it's very clever um and i am i am enjoying it uh first three mm-hmm. episodes are out now uh it's pretty good the mystery isn't really like like i don't really care who pushed this guy out of his off his balcony more so as i just want to keep seeing everyone's side of the story whereas only murders in the building i i really wanted to know what happened with regarding the mystery right so okay. so but yeah i recommend it if you have apple tv plus uh they're only like 30 to 50 minutes so okay. it's not a not a huge commitment tiffany haddish is funny it's nice to see tiffany haddish um in, as like a detective like yeah she's still funny but like I don't think detective when I think Tiffany Haddish. So. No, not at all. Uh, yeah. So, but yeah, I enjoy it. It's, it's a, it's a fun show. All right. Um, so I watched a, another, uh, murder mystery, um, murderville. Uh, this is, uh, we talked about this on the trailers last week. This is with Will Arnett and the hook for this is each episode is like 30 minutes. The hook for this is that Will Arnett, and everyone else in the cast is like in on it, but they have a different celebrity guest every episode who doesn't have the script. So they are going, they're just basically improving uh, based on the things that are being fed to them. Um, and they're, and they're trying at the end of the episode, they have to try to solve the murder uh, that's going on. Um, it's hilarious. And I laughed my ass off. I watched. I just watched the Conan O'Brien episode. That's the very first one, which is pretty good to go go into because Conan is excellent at just like just going for it. Like he's he's super good he's at. He's a funny guy. Like he just yeah, naturally is guy. really funny. And like there is some pretty hilarious moments, especially Will Arnett like breaking and other people breaking as they're doing it. Like it's not filmed live, but it's like. They just leave in all the breaks, right? As, you know, Conan says some, like, wild shit. Um, Like, there's a scene, you know, not to spoil it. I mean, it's just just straight comedy. But there's a scene where they're in a restaurant and they're they're talking to the suspect. And they're at, like, it's like a Sloppy Joe's restaurant. And Will Arnett just keeps putting this extremely hot hot sauce on Conan O'Brien's food. That apparently is actually hot, and so he's like, "No, no, keep eating it. It's really good. You're not, you're not slopping up that Joe enough." And he just keeps fucking pouring it on. And Conan O'Brien is eating it, and he's trying to like stay normal as he's trying to ask these questions that are on a notepad. It's fucking hilarious. Um, and then there's like there's just some great moments of them just trying not to break on some of this like ridiculous dialogue. But it's pretty funny. It's pretty funny. I like Murderville so far. The second episode is with Marshawn Lynch, which 100% I cannot wait to watch. Um, Because I think he's going to fucking crush it because he is nuts. Um, But yeah, look, the episode with Conan O'Brien at least was quite funny. So yeah, if if you like sort of just improvisational comedy with people who really know what they're doing, um, yeah, I think Murderville really works, especially because everyone else has a script. So like yeah. they are saying the thing they have to say while Conan is almost like trying to push them off the script a little bit. Like, cause he's like, cause he's a comedian in his own right. Like, so he's being like slightly adversarial to them, which is pretty yeah. funny. Like this little girl is like, well, what happened to like the, the murder in the first one is a magician mistakenly actually saws his assistant in half, right. Killing her. And she's like, <laughs> well, when is the lady going to get put back together? When are they going to finish the trick? And Conan like leans down. He's like, she's dead. She's really dead. <laughs> she's left this mortal coil. And he just like starts like going and going and going. And this little girl is just like as stoic as she can be trying to deliver these lines. It's really quite funny. She's like, well, that's really sad. And he's like, she's fucking dead. <laughs> like, it's just funny. It's funny. Um, yeah. So I definitely recommend Murderville on uh, Netflix. Um, next up, you watch Nightmare Alley. I did not have a chance to watch this. You probably should. Uh, it's really good. Yeah, no uh, shit. I, I, I mean, I don't really know what to tell you. Um, it's, yeah, uh, it's a neo-noir psychological thriller directed by Guillermo del Toro. Um, 
And it's based off of a novel. So uh, there was a, a, a previous film called Nightmare Alley, but it's yeah. not a remake of that movie. Uh, it's more so a remake of the book. And when oh, okay. I finished, uh, when I finished reading the synopsis for the previous movie, and then I read the synopsis for the previous book. Yeah, this follows a little more like the book. The previous movie has a little more of a happy ending. This does. This doesn't have a happy ending. It has a it has an ending that is closer to the book. Um, so Bradley Cooper plays this dude who kind of gets swept up into this um, this carny troupe, and while there, just performing some odd jobs, he learns how to do mentalism. You know that bullshit shit that uh, that bullshit <laughs> stuff that John Edwards. Does. Yeah, John Edwards. Your grandmother and, just died. No, she didn't. <laughs> <laughs> right Shut and up. he's learned but he's learning but it, it, all that shit is a carny trick folks and he's what? learning how to <laughs> he's learning how to do he's learning how to do hot readings and cold readings hot readings are when you kind of get information on your mark so that you know you know some previous information about them so you can appear to know things cold reading is just like guessing based off of um things that you kind of know about human beings in general. Cold reading is very, very impressive. Um uh when done when when you see it done. Um and he becomes really, really good at it. He eventually leaves the troop. He goes to uh goes to be become a John Edwards, right? And he starts doing like private seances for people, and he seances. and and he does one and he does one for someone that he should not have done it for, uh -oh. and and the movie just kind of plays out from there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, man, it's really good. Um, Bradley Cooper is uh, awesome. Uh, yo, this takes place in the forties, and uh, Bradley Cooper is wearing a fedora in a lot of his scenes. Can we just make Bradley Cooper the new Indiana Jones? Like I understand that does it work? Ford, it works, man. It does. Like I'm looking at him and I'm like, yo, it's fucking indie. It's fucking indie. Dude. I mean, here's the thing: like he can do action, right? Like a team proved that. I don't give a fuck. Nobody say I love that movie. It was ridiculous. <laughs> but he was <laughs> awesome as like face. trash. No, but, he was great as yeah, face. Man, it was great. Bradley Cooper. Can we? I, I really want him to just be Indiana Jones now. And I know Harrison Ford is not going to give up that role. The day that Harrison Ford gives up that role is the day that Harrison Ford is dead. Yeah. Uh, I understand that. But, yeah, you're not um, getting any young Indiana Jones anything until he dies. Like, no, you know. no. He, he absolutely loves uh, Indiana Jones. He, he can't stand Han Solo. He hates Han Solo, but yeah. loves Indiana Jones. Um, I'm like they're the same guy, yo. <laughs> the same <dude. laughs> there's just there's just something there's just something about it. He's him. like I don't like space. Uh, yeah, <laughs> That's yeah it. fuck all that space shit, nerd. Yeah, <laughs> like, give me my it. money. <laughs> um, look, Bradley Cooper's really good. Uh, the cast is 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 pretty great. Bradley Cooper, Kate Blanchett, Tony Collette, Willem Dafoe, Richard Jenkins, Rooney Mara, Ron Perlman. Uh, a bunch of people here, man, and they all give uh, A plus efforts. Yo, you you got to watch this, man. Like it's really good. It's shot beautifully. Um, it yeah, is, of course it is. Yeah, yo, like I can't I can't recommend this movie highly enough. It didn't do well uh, in terms of box office. Every uh, critics love it, but nobody went to see it. Yeah, and um, like there's no supernatural element to it. I don't know if uh, that's what kind of you know kind of i mean but this is like a this is like a mid-budget like acting acting movie like th this shit just does not get people to come out anymore right. like during a pandemic it's just it's just not i don't even know that which that's is necessarily probably, Go ahead. which is probably why it's on hbo max so soon right like hey it came 45 out. days yo 45 days yo it came out december tw uh december uh 17th in the u.s and now here we are. Like, I, pff, all right, man. Look, that's what I'm saying, yo. Like, but, uh, that's what I'm saying, like dude. Yo. Movies like this, this is perfect for me. Right, because <laughs> I actually kind of want to sit, sit and watch this at home. 
Like I kind of do. Also, I have I have a child. Like the fuck, I'm not gonna like. I the reason why I didn't watch it today is because I wanted to wait and watch it with my wife. So we'll probably watch it tomorrow night. Like it's she gonna have to close her eyes for some of the scenes. Oh really? Like violence? It's not a bunch of it's not a bunch of supernatural stuff, but it's there's violence and like oh, she'll does not. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right. Okay. All right, you had to. Right, you right. you ain't gonna mind it. <laughs> oh, mm, okay, got it. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm yeah. just saying. All right, like he don't enough. shy away from. Uh, it, there's no supernatural. There's no like aliens and weird shit. But like he don't he don't shy away from. Uh, he don't shy away from getting gory. All so. right, that's fair. That's fair. I'm okay with that. Um, yeah, no, I like. But that's my thing. Is I, dude, it's 45 days. Like it's not that long. By the time a movie comes out, you're like, damn, I wanted to see that. And you're like. You forgot about it, and then it's like, oh shit, it's on Hulu. Like the last duel's yeah. on Hulu, like in in HBO Max. I'll, yeah. I'll get around to watching it eventually, like maybe next week. But, um, like forty five days is not a long time, guys. Like that idea. Ah, why don't they do day and date? Why? <laughs> why, dude? Yeah, you really don't. It was forty five days, yo. If you can't wait that long, go see it in the theater. Well, I don't want to see it in the theater. Well, then the fucking, I don't know what to do. Like, I don't know what to tell you. Forty five days is not that long. Especially for a movie like this that people were saying is yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Also, Kate really Clay, is. Also, Kate Blanchett looked great in the trip. Yeah, she. Um. Yeah, she I, just has I, a vibe I about like, her, man. I like Kate Blanchett, man. I, I just, I just do, and it, I've liked her before. Uh, Hella, I know everybody is. Uh, right. You know, they saw. Go watch Hella other movies, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and look, I get it. I get it. Right? Right. I didn't hate her. I didn't hate seeing her in that. She looked great. She just has, she has a, she like, there's not a lot of women in Hollywood and I'm not trying to like objectify her or anything. Um, but a little bit, um, she has a sultriness that is not a common, it's just not a common thing in women in Hollywood anymore. Like there's just like objectively like, wow, that woman is really attractive. Like that's one thing. But sultriness is a different thing. It's just, it's like, it's like a slow burn kind of thing. Like, it doesn't matter how old she is. You're just like, it just, she's just got a vibe about her and it's just different. And like yeah. a lot of women just don't have that. Not in Hollywood. Yeah. Movies. Helen Mirren had, has that, right? She does. Like, she's got that vibe. Yeah. Like Helen Mirren is what? 70 something? Yeah. Um, it worked on me. <laughs> What's the name has that vibe? Like, um... Angela Bassett has that vibe. Like Angela yep. Bassett is super fine, but it's like she's got a sultriness to her. It's just like that shit is timeless. Like it, it is just it is absolutely timeless. Um yep. like you're not gonna find any like, oh, there's a 20 year old, like hottie in Hollywood. Like, that's not sultry, you know. Like they're just attractive. Like it is nah, it's that comes with like confidence and like and of age. Like, yeah, does, yeah. Like, like it, you, it, sultriness is like is like like regular hot chicks are like regular porn girls, but like sultry chicks are like seduced by a cougar porn women. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like 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 that's the vibe that they kind of give off. Yeah, that's true. I'm into it. I I just looked up sultry actresses just to see who they list. Like Jessica Alba is not a sultry actress. Jennifer <laughs> Jessica Alba. <laughs> like she's super fine, but like nah, yo. Holly Berry. Holly Berry. I would not argue. As she's gotten older, I, I could see that. I could see it. But, like, initially, no. Angelina Jolie, that's accurate. That's accurate. Yeah. She's got a sultriness to her. Yeah. Um, Salma Hayek? I can see it. Yeah, she's gotten older, man. <laughs> especially yeah, especially now. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, like now? Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. Scarlett Johansson is an incredibly attractive person. She needs a little bit of time before I would say she's sultry. She's not quite there yet. Yeah. She's not quite yeah. there. Um, yeah. So there you go. Uh, Charlize Theron. Getting there. Getting there. She's getting there. She's working on it. Um, all right. Let's. Uh, so I watched the latest episode of Peacemaker. Micah, you have not watched it, so I'm not going to talk about it uh, sort of in depth. But um, yeah, it's a fun one. <laughs> It's it's setting up. I don't know how many episodes the season's going to be, but they're setting up um, some sort of like interesting conflicts, like sort of big big um, season ender things that are that I'm looking forward to. 
Like, um, I, I thought this one was really good. There's a lot of there's a lot of time between Peacemaker and Vigilante in this episode, which is pretty great. Um, because uh, that guy is um, what is it? Uh, Peter Stroma. That guy is uh, fun to watch. Period. Like he's he's just a fun character to watch uh, or actor to watch. Um, let's talk about the Book of Boba Fett. Another great episode, Micah. I mean, it's more, it's, it's more like the the pamphlet of Boba Fett at this point. Like, right? like <laughs> stay over there. Uh, appa- apparently, apparently, uh, the creators of the book of Boba Fett are also also think Boba Fett is overrated and decided to just kind of like not have him in, in in the show called the Book of Boba Fett for two episodes in a row. Like, you I mean, like, no, he was in this one. Yeah, dude, he looked over and then they panned the camera and kept moving. <laughs> like they I don't I'm pretty sure he had no dialogue. Look, um this show if you're a fan of Boba Fett, I don't know what to tell you because the first three episodes of this of this uh series didn't really do it for me. I'm not a fan of Boba Fett. Uh I think he's fine, but I'm not like, you know, I'm not, I don't have a, I, I don't have a, a helmet back here. Right? right. Um, but the first three episodes of this thing did not do this show any favors. If they condensed it to, to one or two episodes and it got straight to chapter four, which I thought was actually very, very good. Um, I'd have been fine. Now the thing is they get to chapter four. I'm excited to see what else goes on with Boba Fett. And then here's my old girlfriend coming <laughs> back. <laughs> and she's just like, hey, remember all those good times we had? And I'm like, I sure do. Just like, you want to do it again? And I'm like, okay. So then <laughs> chapter five is just like a pretty good episode of The Mandalorian. And then chapter six is another pretty good episode of The Mandalorian. Like yeah. they could have just, they could have just, they could have, they could have cut those first three episodes, had a, had a, had a Boba Fett focused episode in the Mandalorian. And then this just could have been season a Mandalorian three. season. Right. Yeah. This I don't understand. Season. Like, like the, the whole premise of this season is that they're working towards Boba Fett and Fennec taking on the Pikes. That could have just been one or two episodes of the Mandalorian. Yeah. Like it didn't I mean, need to be a total if- series. I mean, if we're just going, if we're just going to share this, like, because this is a shared world, right? If we're just going to share this world, what is the point of of this particular spinoff? If like, like, Family Matters is a spinoff of Perfect Strangers. You know, you didn't see Balky Bartakamus in Family Matters for two straight episodes. You focused, focused on him, focused not just in on it. On him, Fo- hard focused on him. It's right. weird. It's a bit weird. right, so it just it and that just, has nothing to do with whether or not you like what they're doing, Boba Fett or not. It's just a little weird that they're two full on Mandalorian episodes in this season. Yeah, like this just could have been a, 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 the the beginning of season three of the Mandalorian. But uh, look, uh, now that I understand that this is what they're doing, right? Like they're not telling a Boba Fett story; they're just telling a story in this world. Now that I understand that, right. I. I, I'm 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 fine with the show except for the first three episodes. You could have really condensed those into two or one episode. But um, let's talk about this specific episode. This specific episode was great. Yeah, it was, um, it was super good. It, it it really it really was uh, it really was uh, good, man. And look, uh, one of my favorite characters in the Clone Wars. I haven't finished it. I've watched like up to season five. I kind of get the gist of it, right? One of my favorite characters in Clone Wars made his live action debut. Yeah. And I cannot tell you how fucking pumped I was when I saw Cad Bane uh, wa- walk uh, to, to uh, Freetown and, and fucking and do what Cad Bane does. Be a fucking badass. Yep. Um, yo, it's so, it was so cool. Leonardo uh, sent me a message 
at uh, three o'clock in the morning because because he doesn't respect the Eastern Time Zone, and and no, he, uh, he was just like, "Yo," and I was like, "All right, this must be something Star Wars related." So uh, <laughs> it must be something Star Wars related. So I went. Well, he messages watched- me at three o'clock in the morning when he's high and going to get like delicious Mexican street food, and I'm like, "Dude, don't send me videos of this shit. This looks too good, <laughs> you asshole." <laughs> And, and, uh, so yeah, man, this, it, I'm so, I'm so happy that the Mandalorian is back, (laughs) that that this show is, is just kind of, but it sucks if you're a Boba Fett fan. So, okay. Um, Yes. Like it, it does, but I would also, I, I would also say that like outside of all of that, can we talk about the fact that, like, look, I understand that Ahsoka Tano, which we'll get to, um, made the jump from the animated Clone Wars series to live action. That made sense, right? Like, when they were like, hey, we're doing more shit, I was like, everyone's like, oh, you know, hopefully, you know, she makes a jump. And she's a huge character, so it makes sense. Fennec jumping from animation to live action also kind of a big deal obviously because like because of who she's voiced by and everything else cad bane making the jump that's not a small deal dude what that means (laughs) is that anyone can make the jump from animation to live action which is a big deal in the Star Wars universe because there are a lot of characters in Clone Wars that people are dying to see make it to um, uh, make it to live action. Like I thought that maybe the end of the last season of um, The Mandalorian was going to be a signal that what is it, uh, Admiral Thrawn was going to be live action, and then people are like, ah, I don't know, I don't know. I think it's completely possible at this point. Like, that he shows up. I think it's completely possible. So, one, Cad Bane looked great. Like, that looked really good. Like, the the yeah. the, the the makeup work or, you know, like the prosthetics or whatever they'd used for the actor um, looked really great. But at this point, like, it just means that everything in Clone Wars is, is possible to make a jump. Which, by the way, means that it's not that crazy to think that the Bad Batch might make a live action jump. It's not that crazy. Yeah. Like yeah, why not? Uh, it's why not? it's weird with the clones because they're all based off of um they're right. all based off of um Tamura Morrison's face. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. But you know, in the Clone Wars they which is which is funny, all the all the people who are the all of the clones have way more personality and and yeah. and uh than than actual Boba fucking fett. <laughs> um they all look the, they all look the same, but they're all different. They all differentiate themselves, and it, it's, the, and the clones are fucking awesome. Yeah, the clones are fucking awesome. But like but, the Bad um, Batch, you could have them show up with their helmets on, right? Like you don't have to like just for like a small like badass moment, and then they just like they're like all right, like whatever. They make some excuse and then they leave, and they never take off their helmets. Then you don't have to show like different versions of them, right? Like you don't. So they they have that out, but. Yeah, like Cad Bane showing up is kind of a big deal from a, f- just from a strategic aspect for Star Wars. Like I, I thought that was pretty impressive. Yeah, poor Timothy Oliphant, man. I'm like, yo, you don't want to, you don't want to get in a shootout with Cad Bane, yo. You yeah, that worked out well for him. <laughs> you ain't gonna Oops. fucking. <laughs> um, look, uh, look, I'm not mad at um at uh, Luke Skywalker's appearance. Uh, no, you know how he looked technically. Um, I think they're getting look. If you're going to insist to to, if you're going to keep insisting to to do use this technology, you got to use it because that's the only way you're going to get better at it. I know everybody had a a big problem with it in Rogue One. Um, uh, good. Uh, the one dude didn't look good. I thought um, I thought Princess Leia looked okay, but she wasn't on screen as much. As See, Grandma I thought she Tarkin. looked. I thought she looked worse than than Tarkin, actually. Like for me personally, I, I, I think, uh, I think you just got used to seeing Grand Moff Tarkin 
in that it, it just didn't look like look looking at a picture of peter cushing and looking at that grand moff tarkin it doesn't oh well they they look like disney characters look. like they looked ridiculous but but yeah go yeah ahead. and I, I i'm the opposite i think i think um leia looked good because we didn't see a lot of her in the movie you yeah, only saw right. like two minutes of her um but you know, I haven't seen that movie in a long time, so maybe it's just me. But yeah, I'm not mad at it. I think they're getting better. The uh, lip syncing is, you know, they need to they need to work on that. Um, yeah. Because it's you know it, it, you can tell Mark Hamill was just kind of you could tell Mark Hamill was not there. Well, they you thought know, they were slick. Sound. Did you notice what they did? Every time he went to talk, they would cut away. And show either Grogu or like show like his body or whatever. Like they were, they, there was only a few, like yeah. for the first couple of bits of dialogue, they never showed him talking. It was always yeah. like he's talking as he's walking away or something like that. So yeah, eventually then they were like, all right, we got to like show his face. But it was marketably better than the, the season finale for um, The Mandalorian. Yeah. So look, man. Um, I can't believe I've turned around on this show, but um, I'm very curious. I th- it, how many episodes is it? Seven or eight? It, I I think it might only be seven. I think next week is the season finale. Wow. I th- I think so. Now, here's the thing. I don't think this should be the season finale. I think this should be the series finale. This should only be a limited series. It doesn't need to be more than this season. It just doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> I mean, just have what, what, just have Boba Fett show up in the Mandalorian from time to time if you want to, but I don't think you need an entire series about him. That yeah, seems incredibly point, clear. <laughs> hey, no kidding. I at this point you might as well. Um, at this point, you might as well just consolidate, and um, because you're 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 playing around in this in this world anyway. Just say you're going to have a part one and part two uh, seasons of, you know, The Mandalorian. Yeah. Or or just call it like, you know, Star Wars Ground Wars or some shit, right? Like just Ground rebrand War. all – like just rebrand all of it. You know what I mean? And just have yeah. just have it be – that be the show. And your, and your, your, point, your POV character will be Din Djarin. And um, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, well, we'll see. I'm looking at the uh, the Wikipedia. Uh, I'm looking at the Wikipedia entry for the Book of Boba Fett. Under critical response, they have a they have a chart. Um, it is the the Book of Boba Fett percentage of positive reviews tracked by the website Rotten Tomatoes. Mm, um, it's not high, if I recall. It's it, pretty bad. It goes. It's funny because it goes. Uh, in the oh, this 80s. is by episode. Hold on, this is by episode. <laughs> All right, now, now this is critics. This is not fans talking. I think this is critics. Yes. All right, go ahead. All those people who told told us we were fucking bullshit and dumb. Go ahead, read it. So, so episode one, uh, between eighty and eighty five. Episode two, ninety. Episode three. Between sixty and sixty-five, there's yeah. a huge fucking dip. Yeah, as, as you get because episode, episode three. three is fucking terrible, dude. It's terrible. <laughs> it is. That's it's I terrible. Off. That's where. That's why a lot off. of people were like, "Yo, I'm not watching these fucking little speeder bike assholes. I'm not watching this. This is trash." No. And then episode four, which I really enjoyed, jumps up good. to eighty-five percent. Right. Episode. It's five, the best. It's the best one. Episode five, hundred percent. Episode six, hundred percent. Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. You know why? Because people like the Mandalorian, dude. They do. And look, I would argue, I would argue that episode one, you're trying to get to know what's going on. I think people are yeah, getting. I think people the are. Of the doubt. They're giving a lot of benefit to the doubt. <laughs> episode two, you're still giving a lot of benefit to the doubt, but you're starting to realize, like, eh, maybe it's not like as good as I want. <laughs> episode three, people are like, nah, yo, knock it the fuck off. This is bullshit. <laughs> this is bullshit. This is not good. And it's not. But that's why in episode four, when you got to see the guy cutting loose on people, Joe, he was literally 
in Slave 1 over a bunch of bikers and was like gunning them down. Like unnecessarily, dude. It's like you could back off a little bit. He's like, no, fuck that. Let's sit right on these assholes and shoot them to death. We were like, yeah, that's the Boba Fett we, uh, we've come to love. Yeah, that's, and, what, that's right, what they want right. to see. And I'm like, and you can still be a hero and kill people. You know, like, like Hello? It's, called a be, it's called being an anti-hero, right? Like, but this whole like, oh, I'm a pacifist now and uh, well, you use some strong language there. I don't think you should have uh, threatened no. that guy's life. And then in the next fucking episode, you're gunning people down in the slave well, fire spray or whatever the fuck you want to call it now. Right, again, and this. It, <laughs> look, look, dude, look. Look, look, you can still call it Slave One. It's not that big of a deal. It's not that big of a deal. That's the name of the ship, dude. It's been the name of the ship since 1980. Relax. So, so Relax. fire spray is it's fucking dumb. fire spray is the fire spray is the model of the ship, and 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 Slave One is the the name that he gave it. So if he doesn't want to call it Slave One. No, nah, yo, they trying to <laughs> like it makes me sound like a conservative asshole, but like, dude, it's called Slave One. Yo, you don't have to change the name. It's slave One, yo. dude. Yeah, it's here's fine. the thing. You we know who was a, you know who's slave. offended by Slave One? No one. No one, dude. I've never heard any <laughs> dude. I know a thousand Black Star Wars fans who are like, yeah, Boba Fett's cool, like whatever. No one's like, well, you know, it's really a fan just calls it. No one, dude. You just make you you're being ridiculous for no reason. You're being ridiculous it's like for no reason. It's like the word Latinx. Yo, Latin people don't call themselves Latinx, yo. They don't. That's they some don't. that's some shit that that's some shit that that guilty white people made up to try and to try and feel like they're contributing. Right. Like, nah, yo, there's no Spanish word for that. Like like just also, yeah, also, I, Micah. Excuse me. It's pronounced Latinx. I, th- I think I. Know <laughs> and it looks like Latinx. <laughs> right, like, it does. Like, that, that doesn't what make the... it sound any better, yo. That's like... one of the. That's one of the lost Thundercats. Latinx. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. look. I'm not. I'm not those people. I can't speak for them. No, nah, yo, seen, Latin people don't I've fuck with that them. term. Yo, yo they're in our fan group. Yo. They're like, yo, nigga, we don't use that. Like. <laughs> What next? We don't go by that here. Go get yeah. the fuck out of here. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> like I'm Mexican, you know. Like just, just, just Mexican, you know. I'm, I'm, you know, whatever, you know. Like just, just say the place I'm from. <laughs> like just, just say the place I'm from. You don't have to try to dump us all into one try to call me. I wish somebody would try to call me a Negrix. Like, yeah. What the fuck? All of you. All of you together. <laughs> all of you. You're, you're a Negrock. <laughs> like, nigga, no. shut up. Like, no, I'm a Baltimore on. Knock it off. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, like, y- you don't have to change the name of Slave One, yo. Like, it's just, like, I get it. You're trying to be, like, really overly cautious. It's just unnecessary. If when the Book of Boba Fett got announced, people were like, they better change that name. And it was like, hashtag change Slave One. And it was, like, a huge thing. Then I'd be like, okay. But, like, no one said anything, dude. No one cared. <laughs> Oh, you like you literally brought controversy to a thing people weren't even thinking about. Hey, did you think about Slave One? No, dude, it's fucking Star Wars. Just shoot the people in the ship. I don't care. I don't give a fuck. Like, come on, man. George Lucas is married to a black woman. He can do this. It's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, like you didn't have to change the name. That's fucking dumb. So, like, um, but we also got Ahsoka Tano in this. Um, in this episode, surprise! I was like, "What the fuck?" Like, again, Disney thinks they're slick. They're like, "Oh, you're not watching? We dare you not to watch it. <laughs> we dare you." Luke is in this episode. Uh, Ahsoka Tano is in this episode. The Mandalorian is in this episode. Grogu's back. You just not gonna watch it? You not gonna watch it? Yes, you are. Cad yeah, Bane is in yeah, it. Jesus, you Christ. know, in terms of like an actual story, like there's a lot going on. Yeah, or there's a lot of like fan service and stuff, but like these shows were done before they aired. Yeah, so I'm very, very curious. Uh, right, it's like, not like they saw the critic the... response and then they were like, "Let's film a Mandalorian episode." Like that's not what happened. Right. So I'm very curious to know, like, what, like, like why, like why was this show rolled out like this? It's very weird. Where it's, really it's, weird. It's, it's it's very odd, man. It's very odd. But look, I'm not gonna complain. I'm I'm digging it now. 
Uh, I'm looking forward to to the next week's episode. Um, it's so, now appointment great. television. It is now, yeah. It yeah. is now. Yeah, I was like, wait, who's this other guy walking up? And I was like, I could see part of his face was blue. I was like, yo, is that Cad Bane? Are you serious? <laughs> All right, fine. God damn it. <laughs> God damn it. But yeah, the second they went, the second like, and then he like pulled out the like, ah, I made him a little fucking, uh, I made him a little shirt, uh, like, you know, made out of Beskar. Like he's, he handed it to him. It's like, mm, is he going to choose to be a Jedi or is he going to be a Mandalorian foundling? Like, are they going to like, I assume he chooses to be a foundling, which is kind of dope, but maybe. Yeah. Maybe I mean maybe maybe he doesn't and and maybe like maybe it's time to move on right like to to make sure you keep it fresh yeah uh, for the Mandal for season three of the Mandalorian when it when it you know actually uh, when it actually begins and not uh, like episode zero episode point five and probably nah, yeah. episodes point seven five <laughs> right <laughs> so there's only seven episodes in Book of Boba Fett so next week is the season finale. Wow. Wow. All right. So it's going to be, it's going to be go, it's going to be like go for broke, right? Cause like, this is the big fight with the pikes. So let's see. They got Fennec. They've got Mando. They've got probably Ahsoka Tano is probably going to join the fight. I'm sure. Um, they don't have much else in the way of muscle. Not a lot. Yeah, I just don't. I just, I'm I'm very curious how this is going to. Um, I'm very curious how this is going to end. Yeah. Um, and if we, and I assume we're going to get uh, Grogu's decision. Like that's got to take up a pretty significant. That story has to take up a pretty significant portion of the episode, which is gonna. I, I'm very curious. I'm very curious how they're going to lay this out, man. Like, of all the people that we've seen. Like, are we gonna see? Uh, are we gonna see uh, um, Carl Weathers' character come back? Right? Like, I, I mean, maybe. I mean, who knows? I, I would hope. I would hope that they would kind of save some stuff for, for the Mandalorian proper. But like, if like I said, if this is what they're doing, like, just rolling we're, it all we're together. Just, we're just we're just doing it all together. And and we'll just call it whatever because we have to kind of differentiate. But like we're just we're just doing it all together. Uh, if that's what you're doing, then yeah, any, anything's anything's nothing's off the table. So hey, you never know. Bo Katan and uh, and her crew could show up. You never know. You don't know. That'd yeah. be dope. They were fucking badasses, man. So um, yeah. Look, I look, I I agree with you. I'm all in, and it's now appointment television. But it's only appointment television because they have literally done a complete 180 on this show. <laughs> and it's fucking yeah. wild to watch. It really is. So, yeah. All right. <sighs> wow. Uh, yeah, I was. it was a very odd episode. I was like, okay, I'm in. Uh, all right, let's get into topics. <laughs> Den of Thieves Pantera. What That's right, the Michael. fuck? Um. So Gerard Butler's uh, sequel is gearing up for uh, a spring shoot. I still haven't seen this movie. Um, I heard it's very good for you know a dumb action movie. It, it is pretty. It's it's pretty good for a dumb. I heard action. it's fun. I heard it's fun. I won't say good. I'll say fun. It is. It's idiot heat. That's what it is. It's dumb idiot heat. heat. Wow. <laughs> and like it's got some pretty good action sequences. It does. Like Gerard Butler does a pretty good job. Um and O'Shea Jackson Jr., he's he's fine in it. Um it's one of the worst impressions of anyone ever uh at the last moments of the movie. But um other than that, I enjoyed Den of Thieves. Um I'm surprised it took this long to get a sequel off the ground, but because of COVID that makes sense. Um yeah, I'll watch it. I'll watch it 100%. This look, Where? this is this has to go to some sort of streaming service. Like I'm not seeing this in theaters. <laughs> like I'm not, you know, like knock it off. <laughs> COVID has to be completely over. Like it has to be completely over for me to see this in theaters. So, I'm trying to see where I can uh 
where I can watch this. I don't know what the hell Pluto TV is, but if they're going to play it with, if they're going to play it with commercials, I'm not going to watch it. That's right. 50 Uh, cent was in the first one. Is Den of Thieves a true story? (laughs) <laughs> then the thieves was inspired by a real life attempt to rob a federal reserve in los angeles okay i guess maybe wow. sort of yeah all right look at me laughing yeah. all loud and long uh all right good i'm glad that you are uh i'm glad that you are excited for um <laughs> a den of thieves sequel i, I, I look, would re- my- i would relax on the excited about it <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. This is this is your jam. Um, I for it, me, it's Den of Thieves, and then way down at the bottom is Heat. <laughs> That's how it works for me. Uh, oh no, you can me, literally watch this shit on Pluto. I literally just clicked on the link. Um, yeah, there you go. Oh wait, this is not the right. one. Never mind. But yes, you can find but, it on Pluto. Well, there you go. Um, Let's smoke. For me, Gerard Butler uh, will always be Mike Banning to me. I mean, yeah. Yeah. He, <laughs> I mean, he is. He is. Uh, those movies are terrible. Um, well, yeah, they're all terrible, but I enjoy them. They're all stupid. Um, yeah, that's fine. The, uh, the, the director of a movie that you are very much looking forward to, Moonfall, uh, directed by Roland Emmerich. Believes that uh, Star Wars and fu- and superhero movies are ruining the movie industry. Um, and look, as I wrote this on the uh, the docket titled, I know that ain't who I think it is. <laughs> like, Roland Emmerich said that? <laughs> Roland Emmerich. Roland Emmerich said that other movies are ruining the movie industry. You make the same movie over and over again, and you have since 1996. <laughs> what are you even talking so about? so here's the thing that um here's the thing that he is 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 saying uh he says because naturally marvel and dc comics and star wars have pretty much taken over it's ruining our industry a bit because nobody does anything original anymore like no that's not like Roland, the line <laughs> not not right. like roland emmerich who directed i mean the day after tomorrow 2012 Mid Midway Moonfall, Moonfall. Um, Fuck off, like dude. they're 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 like like nobody does anything original anymore. Okay, one disaster movies aren't original, and two like that's all you're doing is just disaster movies. Um, disaster movies that blow up like American landmarks. Like maybe may, we, we might need to put you on a list, bro. Yeah, no, that um, dude hates France. By the way, he's just like blow that shit up. Uh, he's quoted as saying, you should make bold new movies, you know? Um, you just made a said the director. Of- uh, said the director of 2012, The Day After Tomorrow, and White House Down. Uh, I think, actually, Christopher Nolan is the master of that. Uh, he is someone who can give, who can make movies about whatever he wants. I have a little bit, I have it a little bit harder. Because <laughs> you've you've all right you've because you make the same movies over movie. and over again, dude. <laughs> right. I have it a little bit harder, but I still have a big enough name, especially when it's a disaster movie or some sort of disaster theme, um, or look, a generally I, disastrous movie. <laughs> like yo, you make <laughs> trash. Yo, he makes trash. Roland Emmerich look, made. Three moderately entertaining movies in a row. Universal Soldier, Stargate, Independence Day. After that, it has all been garbage. Godzilla. It's all been been Independence Day. (laughs) I would argue you're not wrong. Like, (laughs) he's never made a good movie. As As someone said in the fan group, he's made entertaining movies. But he's never made a good movie. Universal Soldier, Stargate, and Independence Day are easily his best three. Godzilla was shit. The Patriot was shit. The Day After Tomorrow was shit. 10,000 BC, I never saw, but probably shit. Um, 2012 was shit. Anonymous, I never saw. White House Down, definitely shit compared to its counterpart. Um, uh, what's the Mike Banning movie? Um, uh, uh, Olympus has Olympus uh, has fallen. fallen. 
Right. That was White House Down sucked. Stonewall, I just heard today, was garbage. Uh, it was very whitewashed um, by someone in the in the community who was in our fan group. Um, Independence Day Resurgence, no thanks. Never even bothered to see it. Uh, Midway looked like shit. And Moonfall has opened with a 22% on Rotten Tomatoes uh, this past weekend. Get the entire fuck out of here. You're just mad because no one sees your movies and takes them seriously. Well, they see them, but they don't take them seriously. Marvel is ruining movies. Shut up. Uh, look, also, what I, ruins I, movies? What ruins the industry? Bad movies? I think it's bad movies. <laughs> like, legitimately bad movies that people don't like actually hurts cinema. I Not think, movies um, people are probably popular. I think what they're I think what they're talking about is the homogenization of like movies, right? Like there shouldn't I agree there shouldn't just be one type of movie sure, out I agree. there. There should be multiple types of movies, right? But I uh, you know, a guy who makes one type of movie saying that there should be multiple types of movies out there Right. Doesn't really make sense to me. I mean, he you made I mean? Stonewall. He made Stonewall, which was not a disaster movie. It was a disaster, but it was not a disaster movie. Um, <laughs> I mean, he made 10,000 BC. Like, that wasn't a modern disaster movie. That was a that was a movie where, like, about hunter-gatherer type of shit that was probably, like, a disaster, too. So, like, you know, he's got he's got range. <laughs> no, to say that to say Marvel movies and Star Wars movies are like so homogenized is wild coming from the guy who did The Day After Tomorrow, 2012, and what's the other one that's just like it? Um or those two movies are like basically the exact same movie. Like you know, they're literally the same fucking film. Um No, I, I need you to just like shut up. I know, like Shitting on Marvel is like a, a surefire way to people to talk about you before your movie comes out to maybe help your movie. But like you of all people need to shut the fuck up. Like you need to. Shut yeah, up. I just <laughs> like and, and and I don't really think people have made like a coherent argument, like a like a cogent argument other than, um, you know, man, I, there sure are a lot of these. You know, like, like OK. Uh, like but I you guys all grew up but... on westerns that you love and were influenced by. It's the same thing. It's the exact same thing. You know how many fucking westerns there were? <laughs> like that that genre got beat to death. And it had decade long runs. This has been one decade. And people were like, oh, this is just too much. Really? Let's go back and watch whatever fucking wild bill bullshit you watched as a kid. You watched it at the time you were four years old until you were like 25. Knock it the fuck off. Again, I need Roland Emmerich to never say anything. Yo, I want to see Moonfall because it looks dumb, not because I think it looks good. Yeah, the uh, I, don't, I don't know if the Moonfall uh, Twitter account caught your sarcasm. But, no, but it uh, told me the moon will be waiting. <laughs> <laughs> Which I thought was awesome. Good for them. Uh, look, I'm happy to wait the 45 days to see Moonfall. I'm 100 percent happy to wait 45 days. Yeah, once it, once it, once I don't have to like contribute to it, I'll watch it. And I'm trying to be upset. Oh, it's it's Lionsgate, so I don't know who's gonna actually like. I don't know who's actually gonna have that, but like somebody, somebody big is gonna have that. Yeah, nah, Maybe. It's, it's gonna be on Hulu. It's fine. I'll if they do, they do. If they don't, they don't. I don't really give a shit. Um, Halle Berry. I um, John Wick fans may not have seen the last of Halle Berry's ex-assassin, Sophia. Although they certainly won't be seeing her when John Wick Chapter 4 arrives in theaters on May 24th, 2023. I didn't know it was that long ago. Barry confirmed in an interview with IGN uh, that she is not appearing in the next John Wick movie. Um, Sophia's not in the next John Wick movie, she said, although the character might be getting her own spinoff film, quote, there could be, there could possibly be a Sophia in her own movie. So she might not be in John Wick, but she might be doing her, her own thingy thing. <sighs> um, <laughs> I, I, I don't, uh, um, what's your problem, Micah? 
I don't have a problem with it. I thought she was fine in uh in in John Wick three. Um my was, problem was with the dogs. She she's a dog person. I'd fuck dogs. Get out of here. <laughs> wow. Goddamn dogs. Unreasonable. Uh although I did I did appreciate that scene. I mean that scene was dope. <laughs> it was awesome. The scene was dope, man. The scene was dope. I I don't know if uh John Wick is a franchise that needs to have spinoffs. Quite frankly, I don't know if John Wick is a franchise that needs to have a fourth chapter. Uh quite frankly, I don't really think it needed a second one. <laughs> it didn't, yeah. You know, <laughs> like it didn't. That second movie was bad, uh, in my opinion. But it, it could have just kind of stayed there. But yeah, look. It is what it Cause is. Because like, because like, it's getting silly at this point. It's getting silly, right? Like, I understand people like the idea of like, oh, there's a secret society of like assassins, right? But like, there's a secret society of them. <laughs> like, that's a, there's, there's a lot of people in this tens society. Of, yeah, there's tens of, of thousands of them. secret assassins. Like right. they, the, like there are so many of them that they have their own currency and they have their own like, they have their own no man's land. Like they have their own neutral ground. Like yeah. what? Like, like Highlander, like churches. It's 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 a little silly at this point. It's a little silly. Like it's a cool idea, but it's a little silly when you stop and think about it. No, I'm not trying to do that. <laughs> I, I guess in the second guess, one, in the second one, he had a suit that was bulletproof. Like he had so a he was bulletproof sleeping. cloth. There was bulletproof cloth in the second one. Yeah, so what? like like a like an easy breezy suit you could wear, but it was also able to yeah, defend like, it like, from getting shot. Like those like those athletic wear suits that they make. Yeah. Only bullets stop are stopped when yeah. when when you get shot at. Yeah, like like the, that's like, just dumb, yo. Yeah, you could, and they have like you know tear away pants like in the NBA, <laughs> like in case you gotta get out of there. Um, yeah, I don't. Um, I, I I think it could have ended after one. To be honest, I like the. Th I did not care for the second one. I thought it was relatively boring. Um, but I like the, the third one. one. Common. Yes. Was that the one with him in common? Like yeah, like shooting like, each other at a mall <laughs> or whatever. Yo, that's silly. Yo, that's not yeah, that as was, badass as like that, that's silly. Yeah, the Silly. first one was just brutal and just it was so different than anything we had seen. Like it was just awesome. Um Yeah. So yeah, I don't I, I don't think her character necessarily garners the fan um interest to make a, a, a Sophia movie. That seems quite silly to me. Just bring her back in another yeah. John Wick movie. Yeah. You know, I, like, you know, again, it's like the book of Boba Fett. Just bring her back in that. She doesn't need her own offshoot it, it feels like too much but you know this is just talk right this is just talk yeah there was she could might of, she might be ginning oh, this up for like, herself like, like, like she could be doing like that. there were legit like there were legitimate talks about having her character and die another day be spun off into a spy action franchise and that you know that didn't that didn't pan out so this is just no. talk so I'm not even I'm not I'm not mad or anything. It's just you know, I don't see the point. That's all. Speaking of uh mad, let's see how mad we can get Micah. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, Madam Webb, Dakota jo Johnson, uh tapped to play the first female superhero star in a Sony Pictures Universe of Marvel characters movie. Um this woman uh, was the star of Fifty Shades of Grey, I believe, um, and she's up to play Madam Web, Micah, in a Madam Web movie. Hashtag Madam Web. Now, this doesn't have Spider Man in it. It's just a story of Madam Web. <laughs> the, so. the blind lady, Madam Web. I don't know Madam Web's history. But I bet it's not as interesting as I bet it's not interesting. Full stop. So Madam Webb. Madam Webb is like a like a like a clairvoyant. Um and when she people a think of Madam Webb <laughs> <laughs> Cold when, readings, hot readings. When when people think of Madam Webb, they think of uh the older woman 
especially from if you if you're like our age um, and you watch that Spider Man '90s cartoon, yep, uh, you think of the old lady uh, who was voiced uh, by Joan Lee, Stan Lee's wife. Oh, um, really? Is that true? That's funny. Yeah, I know that. yeah, that's that's his wife who does who does that voice. And um, you think about that old lady who speaks in riddles and stuff like that. But there were actually two different versions of of Madam Web. Like Madam Web is a title, right? Like Spider Man is a title. Right. Um, and the older Madam Web, I can't remember her real name. Um, her powers got passed on to uh, one of the Spider Women named Jessica Drew. I mean, not Jessica Drew. Uh, uh, Julia Carpenter. Um, the, the the blonde spider woman in the black suit. And um and she became a Madam Web and she's younger and and she got all the powers of Madam Web, uh, plus her own spider powers, but she also got the blindness, which is which, you know, it's uh, unfortunate. Okay. So anyway, I say all that to say that uh if you're going to do a a Madam Web and you cast this young actress or actor, she's probably going to be a younger Madam Webb uh, in the vein of the Julia Carpenter. Sure. Why don't you just do Julia Carpenter's Spider-Woman, right? Like she's got an interesting enough origin, right? Like she's got, like she she became uh, a spider because like this government agency was trying to uh, create their own superhero and she got tricked into being a part of this study and they kind of like injected some spider some super spider shit in her uh, unbeknownst to her and that's what gave her her powers i mean that's enough of an origin to to kick a movie off right right yeah uh, um I don't I don't understand why you would want to go with Madam Webb. I, I just I really don't, especially because there are other women if if you there are other women in the Spider Man universe that you can make movies based off of, right? Yeah, Jackpot. Like Julia Carpenter. Ju- Ju- shut up. Julia Carpenter. <laughs> They're making Jessica, one, dude. They are. Jessica Jessica Drew, right? The Spider Woman that people uh um, no. probably recognize the most. Right. Look, I'm not even mad at at a Silver Sable movie or a Black Cat movie, I'm mad at a Silver Sable and Black Cat movie. Yeah, this doesn't like make Silver any Sable, sense. Silver Sable is a mercenary. You can't get, a, a, you can't make a a, a generic ass um, action movie starring a starring a mercenary who has a who has a, a, a an army, and she's she's very jingoistic about her. Like like you can you can have like. It could be it could be literally anything, right? Like she's a mercenary. Or you can have Black Cat. Like she she has an interesting enough origin. She and she's a cat burglar, you know. Like you can't make something from that. Like no. there are plenty of, of characters that you can that you can like base movies off of that that are that aren't villains, right? That aren't villains. Right, because Silver Sable is and, a villain. So Black Cat is a villain. She, I mean, she's like a so anti-hero. They're both they're both anti-heroes, right? Oh, okay. They're both anti-heroes. Uh, Silver Sable is a mercenary. She she's a gun for hire. Like she does good things, she does bad things. She's she's a perfect anti-hero, especially for this time period that we're in now, where people like their heroes to have shades of gray in them. Right. Like she would. It would be it would be perfectly fine to do a Silver Sable movie. I just don't. I just don't know what they're doing. I don't know. What I don't doing. think they, they don't know, know what they're doing. <laughs> I think that's also the point. But here's here's an idea. You have entered into a time where the multiverse exists. Just do Ghost Spider, dude. Just do Ghost Spider. If look, if you can get yeah, the same man, actress to, just... to come back, that'd be great. If not, it's okay. Cast a new cast a new young lady from uh, a different universe where Gwen Stacy loses her Peter Parker, he dies, and then she becomes fucking uh, Ghost Spider. Look, that costume is already fucking iconic. It looks so goddamn good. Everyone is now familiar with her from the animated movie uh, Into the Spider-Verse. Like, just make a Ghost Spider movie, dude. Like, 
There you go. Sound yeah, I that think, fucking horn. I, I think they would. I think they would cast someone new, right? Haley Steinfeld does the voice for uh, yeah. Ghost Spider in that animated movie, and um, she's already a she's already a Marvel character. But uh, no, no, I meant that doesn't um, necessarily mean anything. No, I meant oh, uh, you mean cast uh, Dakota Johnson or something like that. No, no, no. Who, um, who played Gwen Stacy in the um, the Amazing Spider Man movies? Um, oh, Emma Stone. Emma Stone, like, um, yeah, like, I'm just saying, like, if she didn't want to come back a- as Emma Stone from a different universe, like, just pick another act, just get another blonde actress to to play um, Gwen Stacy, because you can just do that. It doesn't matter. Like, clearly, Peter Parker looks different in different universes, right? So, like, just pick a different a- young um, young blonde actress and just move on. Just do Go Spider, dude. Stop comp. Like, you're complicating the shit. Like, you're complicating it for no reason. Like you don't have to, you don't have to start the story out with her, like her and Peter Parker. She just like voiceover, you know, I lost Peter Parker. He was, you know, loving my life and he died. Right. Like you could just start off with like different stories in the multiverse and she voices over, you know, how she became, um, uh, ghost spider and then just start the adventure. You don't need to go back through no, and make I- it an orange thing. <laughs> No, they're, they're, people love an origin story. They won't. They wouldn't do that, right? Like people love an origin story. They would. They would do the whole death of Peter Parker thing, um, and then make it like a revenge tale. And um, and yeah, I can. I can see them doing. I can see them doing that. I don't know why they don't do it. Ghost Spider um, seems like the odd. Like it's already a fan. She's already a fan favorite. And again, that costume is a fucking dope. It looks. It looks unique. It like it's a it's a unique um, design. It's got the hood, right? So it like I don't know, man. It looks really cool, and like she was she was a standout in Into the Spider Verse. She's had like multiple animated runs, as far as like she's been in at least two um, different Marvel animations. Like, just go for it. Just fucking go for it. Yeah, man. I just so um, stupid. They're so fucking stupid. Madam Web. Yeah, I just it don't. No I, I, like, because Madam Web is like, she, like, she doesn't, like, what is she going to do? Like, is she going to talk for 90 minutes? Like, yeah. is she going to, is she going to sit in that chair for 90 minutes? Like, she's got a, she's got a degenerative disease. Like, like she can't, she can't stand up, yo. <laughs> <laughs> this is not, and that's not funny. No, it's just the idea of making a Spider Man movie. Like, what are you doing? It doesn't make any sense. Uh, yeah, like I'm not trying to be ableist, Joe, but like, uh, yeah, I, it's I, not a good choice for a comic book movie, yo. Like, and we're all we're all in on watching Daredevil kick the shit out of people, but like, you got to be able to like do stuff, right? Like, that's it's, it. Just seems like an odd choice. But again, Echo, Echo, Echo was missing a foot and was deaf. And to kick the shit out of people, sp- right? Like, I just, I just don't. What a dumb, what a, what a weird fucking idea, man. What a just, weird fucking idea. Like, just do Ghost Spider. Like, they have the rights. You have the rights of this character, or do they? Or do they actually? Because she would be, had, um, but she would have been created yeah. after. The contract. I wonder how that works. Like, well, they have no, rights they have to Miles rights Morales. To Gwen, they have the rights to Gwen Stacy, also. Right, like, and they have the rights to Miles Morales. So, like, even that doesn't matter because Miles right. is I definitely. Think they had, I think they had. I think they had everything Spider related. I think is. Uh, yeah. Was uh, was there was their agreement? But I just I don't. don't know, I, I honestly just don't understand why <laughs> you wouldn't do Gwen Stacy, fucking- dude. It's, it's right weird, there, man. dude. It's right there. It really is. It really is. Like th- that can be your spider that you can build an entire franchise that you can ruin an entire franchise for. Yep. And and then have and then have somebody else come in and clean up your mess. But that could be. I'm joking, but not really. Like that can be your big franchise. Look, I'd rather they do that than with Miles. Like I like and not that I want Gwen <laughs> Stacy to be the sacrificial lamb, I don't, but I would rather they use her. Like or jackpot, I guess. Up. I know it's fucked up. And that's cuz I'm black and she's white. So like sorry. Like, meh, I get it. Um 
my bad. Um, <coughs> look, we look, we've gotten kicked in the face enough. Like, just can we just have Miles, please, please? Can you just have Miles done right? Um, but I would like to see. I'd like. I'd like to see her done right. So I guess I kind of don't want them to choose her. Um, but it just it feels like such a missed opportunity not to do Gwen Stacy. Again, like the costume is unique looking. It's already iconic. Young girls like this character a lot. Comic book fans like Gwen Stacy a lot. Um, as Ghost Spider. Hello, you own the rights. <laughs> like you've done the Spider Man story. Three, it's been done now three different times with like you with full or semi control. Do something different. Just do something different. Yeah. I guess they're like, yeah, we are Silver Sable. <laughs> like, all right, cool. Yikes. Um, AT and T is now sort of getting their uh, their final footing here on how to dump Warner Brothers, <laughs> which is really fucking wild. Um. But this this split off they're doing with with Discovery and kind of dumping Warner Brothers is interesting. Like there there's like there's a quote um, from a CFRA research telecom analyst um, named Keith Snyder who says, "Quote: HBO Max has been doing really well. Don't get me wrong, but the new company will have lots of debt and require a lot of capital." And with a weak balance sheet, they're going to be fighting in a relative in a really competitive streaming market. Basically, AT and T was like, uh, "Good luck," and they're just throwing Warner Brothers to the fucking wolves. Um, <laughs> that's not good, man. That's not that's not good at all. Um, I don't I don't know what's going to happen with Warner Brothers, um, but I would not be shocked to know that a lot of their IP gets bought up, bought from underneath them that they're going to end up having to sell shit in the next couple of years. So like, I hope you like DC cause there's a chance DC gets bought by someone else. Cause that's been a big drain on Warner brothers. Like they got to get that train rolling and they got to get it rolling quickly to get like a couple of billion dollar movies to get back on track. And I don't know that they can. Do you think they're in that dire straits to, well, I guess they're trying to pawn it off, right? Um, I mean, I think that it is a massive loss, but like this guy said, I think once they separate, they're go the, the problem is they're going to have so much debt that they're already going to be underwater and they don't have anything. Like their day and date shit didn't pop off really well. Like HBO Max is doing well, but it's not doing amazing. And then you're dumping a ton of debt on top of them. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know, man. Um I don't know. It's uh it's it's interesting. It's it's interesting watching like these big corporations just move like just move money around. I don't know. AT AT and T is expected to reap forty three billion dollars in the deal. That's crazy. <laughs> forty three billion. Jesus. Um, a, a sad return on its foray into the media biz after buying Time Warner for $85 billion. So they lost $45 billion from buying them. Jesus, dude. <laughs> they are, that's how bad Warner Brothers is doing is that they're willing to lose $45 billion just to get the fuck out of this. <laughs> Good lord. Cue the, the uh cue cue the cue the fanboy um uh uh I guess uh not fan casting but like the financial equivalent um Disney to buy Warners and DC and then we'll have our Marvel versus DC movies. That's never going to happen. <laughs> no, see, Disney is actually financially quite smart. They're not going to take on this fucking sinking ship. Look, the the WBD, that's Warner Brothers Discovery, which is going to be this new company, uh, plans to assume up to approximately, yo, know, starting out, they were assuming $43 billion of, a, of additional debt. Additional <laughs> debt. 
43 billion is a big hole to climb out of <laughs> versus the debt that they're already going to have, right? Um, which I don't even know how much that is. Uh, AT&T aims to use the proceeds from their Warner Media spinoff to pay down net debt, which stood at $156 billion at the end of 2021. So 156 is where they were sitting. And um, the fact that they're getting rid of this shit uh, helps them considerably. Um, but yeah, look, I tell you right now, who I think, you know, fan casting as far as, you know, financial fan casting, I think Amazon is waiting, man. I think Amazon is like, oh, yeah, yeah. they got the money. They got all the money. <laughs> Jeff Bezos could buy it straight up. Just cash. Like from his checking account. Like, uh, <laughs> like, uh, what, what's that, uh, what's that boxer? What's the, what's the dumb boxer? Um, uh, Floyd Mayweather. Yeah. He just, he gives, he keeps his, yeah, he's, he's millions his in a bank in, a, checking. <laughs> in his checking account. Just in case so he can get it at an ATM and shit. <laughs> like nigga, get a money market account. What are you doing? Um, well, I mean, that's what happens when you can't read. You're not that smart. Um, but yeah, I think Amazon's waiting. Amazon has been <laughs> like, eh, let's see what happens with all the streaming. Like we got a couple shows. We're not, we're not like digging in, digging in, but Amazon with Warner brothers, um, shit in their, in their back pocket. Oh, that's different. That's different. That, that really, that really would get me to check prime first. I'll tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right would. now prime prime is very much an afterthought like the only reason i i, yeah. I booted up prime is because uh sundance just happened and amazon picked up a couple of movies that i want to see and um so i i have to set like reminders for myself to check amazon prime for those movies because <laughs> <laughs> i'm not gonna do it and i right. really want to see those movies but um yeah prime is i mm -mm, your hulu account gets checked before Amazon Prime does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I get it. Um, yeah, spoiler alert on your Paramount account pretty soon there, buddy. Uh, so, um, yeah, look, I think I think Amazon is the is the is the shark circling then. And I think Amazon has plenty of money, 43 billion dollars in debt, has nothing to them. It's nothing to them. No. Nah. Nah. Shit, they hit one Black Friday, they good. <laughs> like, yo, they fine. They got all the money in the world. So it makes sense. They would become a real because they're not a competitor right now, right? It's it's really it's really Warner, it's really HBO Max, Netflix, and Disney Plus. Like those are the three big dogs. If Amazon could snag that, they immediately in the top three. Yeah. And like like all they need. Like they have the money to pay people to make quality shit. All they need to do is have the mechanism. Like all that prime shit, dude, you buy Warner media and you have HBO max. You already have this good, fairly good. I mean, I know some people have problems with it. I never do, but like fairly good streaming service. And look, they have great tech people on at Amazon. They could fix it if they wanted to. Right. Um, if there are major problems, you have a streaming platform. Rebrand that shit to Amazon Prime. Like that's just full on Prime. Move all your Prime shit under that same thing. Keep all that set up. You're done. There you go. Yeah. And you got yourself. You got yourself a a, a big um, a big uh, competitor for Netflix and, and Disney. Yeah. And and then like yeah. then we're rolling, man. Like because then like companies like Paramount, you're in world of trouble. Like you are like, I'm sorry. Like these small streamers, Pluto TV, you in a world of trouble. Like knock it off. Yeah. That's um, why Pluto's free. <laughs> yeah. That's why they're free. Like, Hey, Hey, we exist. Just come and watch it. Don't you want to watch? Don't you want to watch Den of Thieves? Like, I guess maybe. <laughs> All right. Uh, what the fuck brought to you by JTD? Uh, what the F brought you by JTD? Uh, I wasn't expecting that. So give me one second. Man eats raw meat for 78 days straight to see how long he can survive. Yeah, that feels, <sighs> that feels like a mistake. Yeah. A carnivore is putting his love of meat to the test by con conducting an experiment to see how long he can survive eating raw flesh every day. The man 
has so far managed 78 days consuming his favorite uncooked foods, including chicken breast. All right. (laughs) Steak and swordfish, apparently without succumbing to severe food poisoning. Uh, He has documented his quest to eat raw meat every day until I die from bacteria on an Instagram account uh, that I'm not going to share because people like that don't need any more attention. Uh, Sharing his daily diet with more than 60,000 followers. Um, He washes down his meals with raw eggs or raw animal milk. Um, I don't know where this is. Um, I just, uh, I don't, okay. All right. All right. Okay. You don't want one. No, no, no. Don't do that. Don't do that. (laughs) Don't do that. Um, I, I, I'm watching the video of this dude just eating a steak, just straight raw. Um, one cooking brings out flavor. So no. That's ridiculous. Two, that's really fucking dangerous to eat that much raw meat. Um, like your body is not built for that. Like they're, you know, they're like people who do like the carnivore diet. Yeah. No. They're like, you know, the worst part of it is you just like just shitting yourself. <laughs> like, like you do. You have to take like MCT oil and all this other stuff. Um, so you won't shit your pants. I'm like, that doesn't sound like a diet I'm into. Like, yeah, yeah you, lo- what, you lose weight, bro. You get shredded. I'm like, yeah, because your body is like, yo, I'm starving because I'm not getting basic nutrients. <laughs> this is a terrible idea. Right. I don't, I don't, um, I don't, I don't get this, man. I don't get, I've never, I've never sought attention so much that I would do this. Didn't and he that's say he's going to eat it until he dies? Yeah. He's, he's, he's going to see how long he can survive. And he's got an I'm not dead yet shirt on. Cool. Like, <sighs> well, I hope you get your wish. <laughs> like, I don't know what to tell you. Like, yeah, that's I cool, kind of hope he does too, man. Like, I just don't. Yeah. I really don't understand the point of, of eating like this. Like, I just don't understand the point of eating like this. Like, even just eating a bunch of cooked meat and only eating like the carnivore diet is terrible right. for you. It's yeah, terrible right. for you. <laughs> I go, oh, look at me. I'm doing it. Like apparently get a life. this is a um, life. Apparently uh, he is quoted as saying, when I started eating steak and eggs for breakfast, instead of bagels and smoothies, I felt full for most of the day and stable. Instead of getting dizzy from carb crash, my pain started to go away. Um, Apparently, a 56-year-old woman uh, reveals that she feels healthier than ever after rejecting a vegan lifestyle in favor of raw meat and organs. Uh, you know, from one extreme to the other. That's healthy. So there's a guy. There, There's a <laughs> – you should look him up. He's on, like, Instagram. His name is Liver King. Like, he eats, like, a bunch – he eats a lot of liver, and, and, and he's like, yeah, that's how I stay – Super healthy, and he's like this fucking jack shredded guy. I'm like, one, uh, you're on drugs. That's that's why you look like you look. It ain't from eating liver, my man. Like, knock it the fuck off. And he's like, yeah, it's, it's this ancestral diet. Yo, our ancestors weren't fucking, didn't have a chest like 40 inches across and like eight pack perfect abs. You're on fucking steroids, and you're also eating like a maniac. Stop. Stop eating like that. It's fucking dumb. Ugh. Oh man. You don't have to eat like that. It's fucking ridiculous. How about you just eat reasonably? Look, we're not we're human beings. We're omnivores. We're not like we're not physically designed to only eat plants or only eat meat. Neither. That's why when you are a vegan or a vegetarian, they are missing, you know, micronutrients. Like that's a big problem. There's a lot of them are like um iron deficient and shit like that. It's not that it's not a healthy lifestyle, but it's not how humans are designed to eat. It's not (laughs) like, it's not, I would grant you being a vegan or vegetarian is a lot better than these fucking morons. I just just bite a cow when I see one on the road. Like, no, these guys are idiots, (laughs) but it is just as, it is actually just as physically extreme. Um, it's just, these guys seem like psychopaths and well, they probably are. 
But yeah, don't don't yeah, eat like they, this. <laughs> like it just seems obnoxious at this point. Also, like I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I yeah. haven't tried it. I'm not gonna try it. Doesn't seem like a good idea to me. No, um, no, I'm not gonna try it. I'm also not a moron. I don't need to eat a, a turd sandwich and know it's bad. So I'm judging. Right. I'm right. judging hard. <laughs> Fuck you. My story is actually the same. So the the link is actually the same. So um, nice going, JTD. You screwed us again. Um, I don't have the trailer uh, clipped out here for The Boys Presents Diabolical, but it's um, it's an animated series. Uh, this is done by the people who do The Boys. And it's an animated version of that world. So it's like, it's just a few episodes. And I think each episode is going to be like 17 to 21 minutes. I believe I read. Mm-hmm. Um, so it looks pretty fun. Um, and it just like, sort of like each episode, the animation style is totally different and telling like these different stories inside the, the, the world of the boys and not necessarily about the boys, but just about other heroes and villains inside that universe. Oh, the soups and shit like that. Yeah. Yeah. And like, uh, some of the, some of the, uh, voice actors, um, are actors from the show. Like, um, uh, the guy who plays Homelander is actually, uh, actually does the voice of Homelander in the series, which is cool. So, yeah, that is cool. I, I might check it out. Um, you know, I'm not a huge fan of, um, of, I'm not a huge fan of like adult animation lately. I don't know why. Oh, um, speaking of that, I watched like Injustice. A, yeah, yeah. Then speaking of not being a huge fan of adult animation, yeah, that's, that <laughs> like, movie was terrible. Like I did not, I did not get it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I wasn't yeah. feeling it. I, I, I think I thought Wonder Woman's characterization in that movie was. Uh, not abysmal. Offensive. Like that's not the word. Yeah, abysmal. Right. <laughs> yeah, like, abysmal she she sure. she came off as like she came off as just like a like a like a stereotypical like white woman Republican at this point. Right. Like goading Superman into being a a fucking fascist Psycho. dickhead, and then and then when he is a fascist dickhead and turns his you know fascist dickheadedness on her, she's like. <gasps> How could you do this? Like, we uh, uh, all right, yo. Uh, like, all this right, is yo. what you wanted. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. Like, uh, yeah, that movie, that, uh, that, that series had a, uh, that, the series is, is pretty good, right? Like it's a good Elseworlds tale, but yeah, that movie, that movie was doing too, was trying to do too much, man. Yeah. Didn't way really too much. For it. Way too much. Um, so up next, uh, we we uh, let's talk about the trailer for Paramount Plus's Halo series. Um, I'm interested to hear your thoughts first. Um, you have played all these. Halo I'm, games. I am. I am. I am into this. I think it looks really, really good. Um, especially for like a television show, right? Like. It looks slightly better than something you would see on the sci-fi network. Um, but you know, this is, I, I like this world, um, as, as later halo games have come out, they start to kind of flesh out, uh, the master chief, uh, John one, one seven, um, into being so like, he's still like a, he's not like a deep character, right? But he's a he's like a no nonsense like i got to it's my duty to do this right like he's 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 just enough of a character to be a character but just like a, enough of a blank slate that you can imprint yourself on him uh which is you know kind of the point in these first person shooters sometimes yep and um and he's surrounded by a cast of actual characters and that's what looks that's what this looks like um the uh, the the suit really good i was worried about how he's gonna move in it but um it it looks good um the voice i think is the best you can kind of do without having steve downs actually like give a vocal performance while uh while um 
Pablo, I think it's Pablo Schreiber, who is who is Master Chief, is um giving oh, a physical right? performance. I think. Don't quote me on that. I think. But yeah, man, I mean, like that Spartans, makes sense because he's fucking huge. Yeah, he's a huge dude, man. Like Master Chief is supposed to be like seven feet tall, four hundred pounds, man, in that arm. Really? So yeah, the armor is, is heavy. Jesus. Like like it's not like it's not like plate armor that you just like like it's like cybernetic armor. Like that's why they can move fast and shit like that. Like that's why they can pick shit up like that, right? Um, but you gotta be like you gotta be like physically fit to even get in it and just operate it. But um like the Halo world is incredibly interesting if you like read some of them books and stuff like that. Like it's and anybody can not anybody can be a Spartan, but like your Spartans are kind of chosen and then they're they're put through like this rigorous boot camp to become Spartans. And you can think of if you don't know what a Spartan is, Spartans are like Imagine Captain America as like a super, uh, a, a, a super. Imagine they got the super soldier serum and just fucking disseminated it to worthy candidates. Like they're super soldiers. And a lot of them are like giants. You know what I mean? And a lot of people look up to them. And yo, anyway, bottom line, I'm really digging this. Uh, I would like to get your thoughts and then we can we can laugh at uh, people who have problems with with uh, with what they've seen. Yeah. Look, I think this looks dope. Um, I think that this might be Paramount's first series and relax, Star Trek fans, relax. Star Trek is still incredibly niche and like it, it will always be. It just is. I think this is their first series that might get people to like really go out and subscribe to this. Like, I think this might be the crossover one. Um, look, I think it looks good. Like I, I don't even think it looks good just for TV. I think it looks pretty impressive period. Um, the costume is dead on. I mean, it, it, but I've seen a bunch of halo like cosplay, like people have just nailed that for years. I think it looks great. And look, I'm not a Halo expert. Don't come for me and be like, well, actually, the, like, I don't care. Um, well, what about red team, blue team? Like, just relax. I don't give a shit. Um, but I think largely it looks pretty good. I think it has the same feel of like, um, uh, what's the um, what's the Amazon series? Uh, the, um, uh, oh, fuck. It starts with an I. Um, uh, the the expanse the expanse or e uh, the expanse right um it has that sort of feel to it to me um and, and i'm i'm down for that like as long as the dialogue isn't weird like that show can be kind of weird sometimes um but overall i think it looks pretty good it makes me in- super interested in it i'll tell you that and i only played the first halo game um but it looks fun it looks pretty fun yeah man i i'm digging it so um some people obviously have opinions and um um cortana you know who cortana is yes she's the uh, she's the non thick woman uh who came over and talked to him inside the computer yeah she's a she's a computer program she's the virtual intelligence that is uh in um master chief's suit that uh and she's 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 had quite the character art um Traditionally, Cortana has looked a certain way, and um, people are very upset that uh, Cortana doesn't look like the Cortana that they um, know. So this Cortana, uh, who is still a virtual intelligence, has very human-like features, whereas Cortana has kind of evolved from being um a purple version of like the star wars like hologram thing Mm -hmm. to cortana in halo 4 which was ridiculous just google cortana halo 4 and just tell me and just tell me what your opinion is of that version of cortana um and then cortana has kind of evolved into Looking. All right, yo, come on, dude. All right. <laughs> so, so she they looks like a. She looks like a Frank Cho drawing. Yeah, yo, and, all right. You gotta relax. <laughs> you gotta relax. And they have they have evolved the look of that character to be uh, you less know, insanely uh, sexualized. 
<laughs> and surprise, surprise. Oh, you don't need. Why does the computer program need to have like perfect tits? Like, it's come on, stop it. Like, all right, Jesus Christ, so fucking nerds. This it's the it's the mystique and, thing. That's all it is. It's the mystique thing. Yeah, and um, surprise, surprise, the people who have the biggest gripe about this think that Halo 4 Cortana is the best-looking Cortana. Yeah, because right? it yo, should be based off of that, right? Meet uh, a girl <laughs> in real life. Good Lord, what? <laughs> it's uh, it's yo, a little Cam, you got to relax. Stop sending us <laughs> tweets about this. <laughs> But yeah, man, and people have a problem with Master Chief's voice. Now look, that's just something you're gonna have to get over, right? Like it, uh, Steve Downs does like his voice is synonymous with Master Chief. I get it, sure. but at the same time, like I don't think this voice is bad. I really don't. No, it's um, fine. It's a pretty commanding voice. Yeah, it just it's just not like it's just not like we have to finish the fight. Right. Like it's not, it's not like, it's not your dad. Right. Right. Like Master Chief sounds like your dad. And, and I think people kind of imprint that on them. Right. Like, especially because that's how he's kind of portrayed in the, in the, in the games. Right. Like he's the last Spartan. And whenever he shows up, it rallies the troops and shit. Right. He's just like, yeah, we've got to, we've got to, get on Halo and finish the fight and, <laughs> and all that shit. Right. And it just is. So people have their gripes. Look, I'm not mad at you. If you, if you have a gripe about master chief's voice, cause I have my gripes about like stupid shit, right? Like suits and shit like that. Like that's dumb. If you're mad that Cortana's tits aren't fucking jumping around, Okay, you gotta um, relax, yo. <laughs> you you got a problem, yo. Like just like just chill, yo. Like I'm sure there's enough like Cortana pictures that will satisfy you on the internet somewhere. <laughs> but, I'm sure. I'm sure there are. Good <laughs> lord. Yeah, look, again, I don't have those hang ups because I, I don't know. I've I've touched a girl for real. Um but like <laughs> Um, otherwise, like, yeah, I think this looks pretty good. I do. I think it looks pretty fun. Um, yeah. this is like March that this comes out, like March 4th or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Something like that. Um, first of all, Pablo Schrauber is a uh, six, five. Yeah. He's and, a big uh, dude, man. Boy, howdy. Yeah. yeah like that yeah. guy is huge. Um, uh, Tiara, yeah. Tiara. Uh, this is a message for Tiara. If she ever listens to this, I don't think she will. Google Pablo Schreiber, and uh, you're welcome. Yeah. No, she be, um, she probably already knows who he is. She probably don't know his name, but uh, she probably she probably knows who he is. Yeah. Just not know his name. She's like, oh, the white boy from Den of Thieves. I got it. <laughs> he yeah. was in that movie. I'm like, yeah, yeah. And I like that guy. Like I, I, I like that guy when he shows up and things. He's great. Um, He's fun. Do they show? Like, do you see Master Chief's face? Like, are they going to show his face in this? You think? Um, I kind of hope not. He's uh, Master Chief has kind of a Judge Dread thing going on. Oh, okay. Um, you don't really see his face. Uh, he's been described in books. Uh, as just like a big cornfed white dude, like just a big hoss of a dude, right? Like. Uh, brown hair and just like uh, in the books they describe him as a child and he was just kind of ugly but like all kids look kind of ugly when they go through like puberty you know what i mean like babies either come out looking like aliens or looking really adorable and then they grow into like adorable kids and then they grow into cute toddlers and then they then they start maturing and like Mm. smelling funny and getting all like pockmarked and shit and then they and that that lasts for way too long <laughs> and then they hit their 20s and everybody's all sexy and shit then they hit their 30s everybody's in their prime Every, then they hit their 40s and then they got start getting gray hair and then you know it's all downhill from there it's all downhill from then their body starts aching and shit so <laughs> that's, um, that's too bad for some of you um <laughs> What? 
That's fucking hilarious. That's what. <laughs> <laughs> Truth hurts. Um, like your knees. Uh, all right. So yeah, I look. I think this looks pretty good. Um, I'm interested in it. It's it's March 24th. It comes out. So yeah. Okay. I'll, I'm all in. I will check it out on Paramount Plus. But I do think this might be their crossover. Um, this might be their crossover uh, series. I hope it is. Look, I hope that if, works out well for if, them. If this doesn't do it, I don't know what will because, like you said, Star uh, Star Trek is great. But when you say Star Trek, you think nerd, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. No, but no, I like Star Trek. Right, like uh, quite frankly, more people need to watch and and take lessons from Star Trek. Right, but um, but it's just Star Trek's just not like uber mainstream. So. It's not, but the second a Halo series comes out, that's very mainstream. Like that is, yeah. and that could get people being like, especially if it's good, and people are just like, oh, like have you watched Halo? It's really good. You gotta check it out. That'll that'll move numbers. So I look, yeah. I, I'm I'm rooting for man. I I hope it I hope it does work out. I think that would be awesome. So they they just have not gotten a a series that's really like gotten people super super excited. So I'm hoping this is it. Um, and they have they have but, like like the good fight is is a very very good show. Um, from what I understand, my wife. That's why we got Paramount Plus, right? Because my wife absolutely loves the good fight. So they got a couple things, but I think this would kind of like you said, really, really kick it up a notch. So there you go. we'll see. Good luck to Paramount Plus. Um, all right, that's it for us for this week, and we will see you guys next week. See ya.